I'm Fiona Fiber. And I'm Frankie Fiber. And together, we are the Fiber Friends! In part one of this theme adventure, we're going to celebrate the kickoff of this year's summer reading program, Reading Colors Your World! And we're going to learn by dyeing fabrics. Yeah, so let's get started. We're going to learn how to dye your own fabrics in fashion at home. Are you ready? All right, Frankie, are you ready to learn about what dyes are? I am, are you? Yeah, let's get started. Okay, so today we're gonna learn more about dyes, which are basically a mixture to help color your clothes to make them really fun and beautiful and colorful. You can kind of see the different types that me and Frankie are wearing today, yeah? Pretty cool. Um, and there's different types of dyes that you can use when you're coloring your clothes or your fabrics. And they can be either natural, which means you can actually use vegetables you use every day or eat every day, like carrots or celery. You can even use fruits or roots that you find around and you can create dyes from those. But today we're gonna actually use what's called synthetic dyes. And those are the kind of dyes you can find at your store. And they look different. They come in different packaging. Some of them come in bottles that look kind of like this. Commonly also referred to as store-bought or box dyes. And this is one of the most common ways to color our fabrics because you can just go to the store and purchase these re things really easy. And they're also really inexpensive. Um, so basically, the store-bought box dyes, they use a solution that's a pigment of color that's inside of here that you then dissolve into water, and that's going to create the reaction that absorbs into your fibers. Overall, dyeing your clothing and fabrics, um, it does take a lot of water. So just be mindful of, of the amount of water that you are using because overall, when we do add color to our clothes, it does use up a lot of water. All right, everyone, so now that we learned a little bit about what we're going to be dyeing our clothes or fashion with or our fabrics with, let's look a little bit at how to tell what kind of fabrics you're going to be dyeing. So when you look at your clothing um, to get ready to dye it, you want to make sure that you have some natural fibers fibers in it. So the natural fibers are things like cotton or silk. Um, and when you're looking at your clothing, you want to look either to the top area of the back of the shirt or a lot of times the fabric content is going to be inside the shirt on one of the sides and it'll be on a little tag just like this. So on the tag, you're going to read, it has different percentages. So for example, this one has 60% polyester and 40% cotton. And a lot of times when you're looking at your fabrics for what kind of content is in it, that's going to determine if the dyes will work well on it. So you want to make sure to read what kind of fabrics you need and look on your clothing to make sure you can find them. Yay! And we also recommend that with any dye that you buy, um, to research the brand or the company because on their websites they'll give a detailed explanation of which, which dye works with which fabrics. Because today we're dyeing with natural fabrics which come from nature, but a lot of us wear synthetic fabrics too. And there are dyes that work with those, but just make sure that you buy the correct dye for the fabric that you are using. You can also read the inside. There's all these really awesome instructions on the inside of the dye packaging. Some dyes even ask you to use salt, vinegar, or soda ash as a binder. Wait, 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 Frankie. What, wait, are you talking about a binder like that you use in school? A school binder. <laughs> You're not wrong, Fiona. Those are cool. But in dyeing, something called a binder, also known as a mordant, is a process that we use to treat fabrics before we dye them. So by adding salt, vinegar, or soda ash, that's gonna help the fibers absorb the color even more and it's also gonna make the colors darker or brighter. So it's pretty cool. All right, everyone, now we're ready to prepare our dyes. But first, we need to... Gear up! Make sure you put on protective clothing when you dye stuff. So it could look like a big t-shirt that has stains on it already, maybe one that you cook in or paint in. It could be an apron, a coverall, big t-shirt, because we're working with dyes and it's gonna stain you if it gets at you. So make sure you're covered. And also, it's a really good idea to wear some gloves. You can wear these like thinner disposable ones or reusable, or the thicker rubber ones. So that way when you're working with dyes, it doesn't stain your hands either. All right, everyone, now that we're all geared up, let's get ready to get colorful. We're gonna learn how to mix our dyes. Can you show us, Frankie? Yeah, you betcha, Fiona. So I'm gonna show us how to use the store-bought or box dyes. Of course, you're gonna need the box dye itself. You're gonna need some salt as a binder. Ooh. 
You're gonna need a little bit of, um, just one teaspoon of dish soap. You're actually gonna need a whole cup of salt. And you're gonna need a spoon to steer your stuff with. I have the colored pigment here, and this is gonna be dissolved into some water, some hot water, as hot as a tub will contain. All right, so we've read the instructions and we're ready to make our box dye. So the first thing we did was dissolve that powdered pigment into some hot water and it's become liquid. So first, the instructions say to add our binder. So we're gonna add one cup of salt. It's important to use a bucket that you don't use for food. So make sure when you're dyeing stuff that this bucket right here with the water is not shared with any like food stuff. So if you have like an old pot that's maybe scratched up or just one that you might throw away, you could reuse it as a, as a vat or a bucket for dyes. And it also says, the packaging says for best results to add a teaspoon of liquid dish soap. So we're mixing that in here as well. All right, so here we go. We're gonna add the pigment to our color. Well, actually, this is our color. Our dye, our pigment became a dye. All right, thanks to Frankie for showing us how to do that box dye mix. Mine is gonna be a little bit simpler. All you need to do is get the dyes that come in the bottles, and some of them already have all the ingredients you need, so you don't even have to add a binder or anything. You just add water into the bottle. So that's what I'm gonna do. Just gonna unscrew the lid and add some water in. Um, so that's basically it. You add the water in, and you give it a good shake, like so. And then we're ready to dye. Our dyes are made. Yeah, hey Fiona, check it out. I found these socks, and I remembered what you said earlier about the fiber content, and I checked the back, and these are 80% cotton. So they're gonna work really well with these uh, dyes that we have here today. But these are white socks, and um, I really want them to be like a really dark black, but I'm not really sure how to get them that color. Yeah, that's such a good question, Frankie. Um, do you want to learn a little bit more about what's called saturation? That yeah. will help us to That's understand awesome. how to do that. So saturation is something you want to know about when you're dyeing your fabrics because it's going to let you know how dark or light the colors would be. And when something is saturated, uh, it means it has more color. So when you're dyeing, depending on the amount of time you leave your fabric in the water, the darker it will get. So I kind of did a little test swatch sample so let's learn a little bit about saturation. Um, these are the different colors that came out when I left the, the fabric in the water for different amounts of time. So you can see when with only 15 minutes in the water, I mean in the dye, um, it had like a lighter gray color. With 30 minutes, it got a little bit darker, as you can see. And then when I had it in for an hour, the saturation was really intense because it absorbed more of the dye. So depending on how much time you have and how dark you want your fabric or clothing to be, that's the amount of time you want to leave it in. And you can do tests like this too so you can see what colors you like the best when you're in when you're using your dyes to create your fabrics and colors. Wow, thanks so much Fiona for teaching us about saturation. I think I'm gonna leave these socks in there for a whole hour or maybe two. But I read the package instructions and I saw that the dye doesn't last forever. So if you're dyeing stuff at home, make sure you have everything you want to dye around you because after a few hours, it'll lose its effectiveness. So just a tip. So before I dye these socks, I'm actually gonna wash them in some water and get them wet. But you want your clothing to be moist and wet as it goes into the dye bath. All right, so these socks have been washed and I'm just gonna dip them in all the way so I can steer it around. And it's a good idea to agitate. So when you steer, when you stir your clothing around, you're agitating it. And when you agitate the dye, it actually activates it even more to get that color into every single fiber. All right, so I'm gonna show you one more technique that you can do um, that's really simple when you just wanna dye your shirts with the dyes that you already have prepared. So we're gonna learn about a technique called ombre. So I already pre-washed my shirt like Frankie taught us and now I'm just gonna dip the bottom of the shirt into my dyes so just like this and I'm gonna leave the other side hanging over the edge of the bucket 
All right, so we won't have time to do our full ombre effect today, but I wanted to show you an example of what it looks like when it's finished. So normally with ombre, you'll start by dipping one part of your fabric for an amount of time, maybe like five to 10 minutes, depending how dark you want it, using your knowledge about saturation. And then you will dip other parts of the fabric for longer amounts of time so the color gets darker or for less amounts of time if you want it to be lighter. So this is an example of an ombre shirt. The darker fabric at the top of the shirt was dipped into your dye for the longest amount of time. This one had a little bit less time. The bottom had only probably a few minutes of time. So as you go through, you can choose the different colors of saturation that you want on your shirt and you can make it really fun and cool. All right, everyone, so we're gonna show you one more technique so you can get your clothes looking super duper colorful. This one is just a very basic tie-dye rubber band technique. So all you have to do is grab a rubber band and then you just pull up very random sections of your shirt, uh, a little spike looking thing, just like that. So I already did a few, but I'm just adding a couple more. Okay, time for our grand finale. But we're gonna add multiple colors to our tie-dye. And as you can see, Fiona's shirt is white and my shirt is like a dark blue. So this last experiment is going to teach us about over -dying. So over is basically where you have a fabric or a piece of clothing that's already been dyed a color. So this blue shirt has already been dyed blue, but we're gonna add different colors to this shirt and the white one and compare how they come out. We're gonna use our simple bottle dyes to add the color onto our shirt. So, so you can choose whatever colors you want to use on whatever parts of your t-shirt. As you can see, once you get it on there, it's going to be on there. So just choose where you want your colors to be. You can see the shirt's going to be really, really fun. And you can even use, if you don't want to use a bunch of colors, you can just use one color and create a pattern that way. It's really up to you. I don't want to have any white spaces on mine, so I'm going to continue to add some color. And you can kind of see as the colors layer, they also mix and make other colors. So it's really cool. You can see the transformation. Yeah, we're gonna let this sit for just a little bit and then we'll do our big reveal at the end. And I'm gonna invite Frankie over so she can show you all about her over dyeing. All right, thank you so much, Fiona. Your shirt's gonna turn out so awesome. So let's do some over dyeing. This shirt's already been dyed blue. So I wonder if when we add the yellow, it's gonna turn green! <gasps> I wonder what this red's gonna do. Let's see. Whoa, kind of looks like a purple or like a black. An important thing to remember is that when you're dyeing, it's kind of the same as using markers or colors, any colors really, but if you add a light color to something and then you add a dark color over it, that dark color is gonna dominate the lighter one. All right, everyone, here's the big reveal. Are you ready? Woo! Woo so just remember, when you're done dyeing your items, make sure you rinse them out with water until you don't see any more dye come out of your fabric. So you're just gonna rinse it with water until the water looks like water and it's not color. And you also want to wash them in your wash with no other clothing or maybe with an old stained towel um, until all the dye is out. Hey, thanks for attending part one of Color Your World, working with dyes, steam adventure. Stay tuned for more programs all summer long.